Hello, this is Allie with the Perception Trainers, author of the Perception Diet. And today I want to talk to you about how to set a New Year's resolution that you can actually keep. Alright, so New Year's resolutions, New Year's is coming up, everyone's going to be thinking about setting goals and, you know, things they want to change in their life, things they want to achieve in their life, and the things they want to go, places they want to go, and all this stuff. And basically, I am not the kind of spiritual teacher that tells you, you know, New Year's resolutions are ridiculous and don't set them. Because the thing is, we are all here to expand. We are all here to learn and to grow and to have new experiences and to realize higher and higher levels of our potential. And I truly believe that, you know, a New Year's resolution or a goal or an intention, they can all be the same thing. And when we, when we know how to set these intentions in a way that are, that are a little bit more meaningful and a little bit more powerful, we can actually use them to expand and to learn and to grow without needing so much contrast in our life, right? Like, so we can, or we can use the contrast, so we can use the things that we're going through that we don't necessarily love, that are not necessarily the most enjoyable things, and we can help, we can take that stuff and we can turn it into an intention or a goal or a resolution that can actually be something that really enhances the quality of our lives, okay? So I'm gonna to talk to you today about how to set a real resolution or a real goal or a real intention that is super powerful that you can stick to and that won't be hard to stick to because I'm gonna give you essentially the tools so that you don't become one of those people that buys a gym pass in January and by February it's collecting dust, right? Because that doesn't feel good, right? And um, the second thing that I want to say before we get into this is that the way that I'm going to get you to set up your goal setting here and your re resolution setting is very much focused on the positive, okay? Like really focused on what you're doing right, what you are achieving, what you are doing, what you are learning. Because the fastest way to destroy our self-esteem is to sit around and think about all the things that we failed at, right? And to think sit around and think of all the things that we didn't do and all the things that we haven't accomplished. And, and and I think that the other thing is that, you know, part of the part of the program I'm going to give you here for setting your goals and setting your resolutions is that they are very specific and they are very measurable. And this is because when we tend to set goals that are arbitrary, that are kind of like, I want to lose weight or I want to save money or I want to do this or I want to do that, it's kind of like, or I want to like get the perfect body. It's like we set these goals that are very uh, arbitrary, right? They're, they're not specific and therefore we, we tend to walk around knowing that we failed and spending a lot of time just knowing that it's like we didn't get it, we didn't achieve it, but we don't even know what achieving it would actually even look like, right? And so the more we time we spend focusing on how we haven't done it, how we haven't gotten it, how we haven't achieved it, um, the more we kind of reinforce that we can't do it and that we're not capable and that we suck. And that actually just kind of reinforces this whole big cycle of, of failing. And so this, this goal setting, uh, this resolution setting that I'm going to share with you today is so positively focused because I want you to understand the value and the importance of acknowledging yourself and acknowledging what you have done and acknowledging what you have achieved and acknowledging how you have taken steps and what you have done. Because the more you reinforce to yourself that you are capable and that you have done something, the more you believe in yourself and the better able you are to continue on with your goal. Okay? So that's that. Alright, so step number one in setting a resolution. Number one, it has to be set in the positive, okay? So your goal cannot be, I'm going to lose weight. It's not going to be, I'm going to stop spending a whole bunch of money that I don't need to spend. It's not going to be, I'm going to stop smoking, okay? Because you cannot become not something, all right? And this is like the first kind of mistake that I see most people make when they set a resolution, is that it's like set in the negative. It's becoming not something. And the thing is that, you know, energy, cannot be created or destroyed, only tr like um, transmuted into something else. So this is, it's the same for you. When you're setting a goal, you need to know what you want, where you're going, what you're going to become in place of the thing that you are now, all right? So you're never going to get rid of something and create that vacuum of just nothingness, 
right? So you just become a non-smoker. What you're going to become is someone who deals with their emotions in a completely different way and therefore they don't need cigarettes anymore because they're doing something else. Right? You don't become someone who loses weight, you become someone who has healthy habits. Someone who's developed an eating habit and a lifestyle that allows you to maintain and sustain a healthy weight in a way that's like fun and easy and enjoyable for you. You see what I'm saying? Your goal must be set in the positive, so that's the first thing. It's not what am I not doing, it's what am I doing? What am I creating? Who am I becoming? Right? That's step number one. Step number two. Your goal has to have a positive emotional association for you, all right? So the way that I, I basically suggest that you go about setting a goal that has a positive emotional association for you is take the negative emotion that is driving your goal setting to begin with. So most people's goal setting comes from a negative emotion, right? It's coming from fear, right? It's, it is so painful for me to be at this weight that I want to lose weight. It is so painful for me to be a smoker that I want to stop being a smoker. It's so painful for me to be in debt that I want to stop being in debt. It's so painful for me to not travel that I want to travel, right? So rather than focusing your goal on this negative thing that you're trying to get rid of, I want you to take that negative emotion, that negative feeling, that fear that you have around the thing that you want to change, and I want you to imagine what it's going to feel like when you're in the place you want to be. Okay, so what is it going to feel like when you have a healthy body weight and a healthy body that you can walk around in and enjoy, right? Focus on that feeling, right? Start to imagine that feeling. What would it feel like if I had this thing that I wanted? So someone who, if you want to quit smoking, maybe you notice that you, you just like, you can't, um, like the smoking makes you feel sick and the smoking makes you feel on unhealthy in your body, um, but it also helps to alleviate emotional tensions and stresses. So to be someone who doesn't smoke, first I want you to focus on like how healthy you know you're going to feel when you stop smoking, right? So when you start to become someone who can address your emotional issues or address your issues or address your anxiety or address your boredom or address whatever in a healthier manner, how would that feel? You see what I'm saying? So positive emotional association with your desired feeling state. Does that make sense? So step one, it's you're choosing a goal that is set in the positive. And step two is you're, you're developing a positive emotional association with the goal. Does that make sense? Okay. Then step three, focus on that positive feeling as much as possible. Start to imagine yourself already having achieved the goal. So the, the third step is focusing on the positive feeling, but it's also being very specific about what it's going to look like and what it's going to feel like when you're there. Right? So this is not some arbitrary goal of I want to lose weight. You see, because how are you going to know when you've lost enough weight? How are you going to know when you're healthy? How are you going to know when you've achieved the goal? I would prefer that you say, you know, I want to get to a place where I feel comfortable in my clothes, I feel comfortable in my body, I feel energy enough to do what I'm doing, I enjoy the foods that I'm eating, I know that I can treat myself and I know that I can eat healthy most of the time, there's no restriction. And that, see, like that is like a well-formed idea of where you're headed. Right? And so you start to focus on the feeling of what it would feel like to have that. You see what I'm saying? So again, someone whose resolution is to stop smoking. So I'm now someone who has very clear lungs, it feels really, I feel very energetic, I feel like when my anxiety comes up or when my depression comes up or when my, um, just my inability to be in my emotion comes up, I am starting to learn new habits like maybe I journal or maybe I try going for a walk or maybe I try talking to someone or maybe I try playing solitaire or just letting my mind run. You see what I'm saying? And you start to make this, this goal very specific and very detail oriented. As you start to imagine yourself being where you want to be, you start to really get like what are all the elements that are going to have to be in place for you to be achieving that goal. Okay? And then fourth thing, move from the state of already having achieved your goal. Okay? So now that you've, you've decided what your goal is, what you're becoming. You've decided that what the emotional positive association is with this goal. And then you've started to make it specific, right? You've started to understand like all the elements that you want to feel, but specific in your feeling state about it, right? So specific in how are you feeling? What is it looking like? What is it 
sounding like? What does it taste like to be at your goal? You see? And then you start to imagine as though you have that. You start to really put yourself in the mental state, in the emotional state of having that goal by visualizing it every single day. And you start to make decisions and choices from that place. Right? So rather than making the choice of like, okay, I want to lose weight and I really hate how I feel, so I'm going to try this diet. Right? When you start, to, when you make choices from that place of fear and that negative association, that negative emotional place, you actually create the perfect environment to continue to feel that negative feeling and therefore continue to fail at your goal over and over and over again. Whereas if you're starting to make choices from that positive emotional state, that positive feeling state, that positive where I want to go place, that's when you start to have the power to make totally different choices that you never would have had before. Okay, so like you start to say, okay, if I already had this body that I'm really wanting, and I'm really feeling comfortable inside myself, and I'm really enjoying my food, and I'm enjoying my energy, and I'm like really feeling that, like I'm imagining that, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling what that would feel like, and what that would look like, and what that would sound like, now what do I want to eat? Now how do I want to speak? Now how do I care for myself? Say your goal is you want to save money this year. Right? So how does it feel to have that money in the bank? How does it feel to like know that you've got some reserve? How does it feel to know that you've, you've you know, taken some positive steps towards you know, consolidating your, emotion, your financial situation so that you have some money in the bank? How does that feel? And then how are you going to address your money now? How does it feel to be around your money now? You see what I'm saying? Start to make your choices from the feeling state of already having achieved your goal. Does that make sense? So that is how you set a New Year's resolution that is something you can actually do. Okay, and then the fifth step is you acknowledge your successes every single day, okay? Even if your successes have nothing to do with your goal, have nothing to do with what you've actually done, have nothing to do with your you know, actual resolution, you start to make a practice of acknowledging yourself for what you did that day and how you were that day and even just acknowledging yourself for the person that you are and how much you appreciate who you are as a human being. And you start to make that the tape that plays in your mind at nighttime rather than the tape of all the things you didn't do and all the things that you failed at and all the goals you didn't achieve and how you're not there yet. You see, because so much of the time we focus so heavily on the not having what we want, the not having achieved what we want, that we set ourselves up to continue to not achieve it because we're continually beating our own self-esteem down over and over and over again, continually reinforcing that we're failures and we suck and we can't do anything by having these big lofty goals that are set in the negative that we don't actually really know how we're going to get there or how it would feel or what that would look like, but we know we're failing, so we're reminding ourselves of that over and over and over again. Stop that, okay? Make a practice of five minutes every single night. You sit and you write in your journal or you think in your head or whatever works for you that you are acknowledging what you have done. Even if today it's like, I remember to brush my teeth twice. Right? Count it. Spend five minutes thinking about all the things that you have done, all of the things you have accomplished, all of the things that you are that you're proud of, all the things that you love about yourself. And start to, again, like reinforce your self-esteem, re-empower yourself that you're capable. Right? You are awesome. You have done lots of great things. And then make your goal smaller. Right? So break that big feeling down, right? You have that big overarching, this is what it's going to look like to be where I want to be. And then you just start to break it down into like smaller little increments and you celebrate your success for every little thing. So rather than I want to lose 50 pounds and da 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 da, you have that whole big vision, that's great. And then it's like, okay, what can I start with today from this feeling place of already having it? I feel like I need to drink more water. Okay, so I'm going to drink two liters of water a day. You see what I'm saying? You make that tiny little goal, and then you accomplish that goal, and you celebrate that. I'm going to, instead of buying a latte every morning, I'm just going to make my own coffee, and I'm going to take that $2, and I'm going to put it in a jug. I've saved $2 today. That's fucking awesome. You see what I'm saying? Tiny little steps, tiny little increments, making those decisions from the already having it, and then celebrating that success. All right? So, that's my how to set a goal and to achieve it, how to make a resolution that actually works. Set it in the positive, make sure you have positive association with it, really start to visualize what it would feel like and what it would be like to be there already. Start to make choices from that feeling place and then celebrate your successes. Make your goal into tiny little things and celebrate every single step that you take, right?
So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I love hearing from you. Let me know if you have any video requests or if you want me to talk about anything. And I will, oh yeah, follow me on Facebook, Perceptor Trainers. Follow me on Instagram, Allie underscore Perceptor Trainers. And I will see you in the next video.